On today's episode, Neuralink gets a second chance, Tesla leaks their new robo-taxi, and Gigafactory Indonesia is back on the table. Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink has received a major new green light from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration that will rapidly expand the scale of Neuralink's human trial with their first brain-computer interface device, known as the Link. The latest FDA approval grants the biotech company permission to implant a second human patient with their brain chip as early as June 2024. That second user will join Neuralink patient zero, Nolan Arbaugh, in the company's prime study, which is currently assessing the safety and effectiveness of the radical new brain implant procedure. Speaking of which, there have already been a few very well-publicized issues with Nolan's first implant procedure mostly having to do with some of the ultra-thin and flexible electrode wires retracting from Nolan's brain tissue, which will inherently reduce the potential effectiveness of the link. A new report from the Wall Street Journal reveals that most of the 64 wires originally placed into Nolan's motor cortex by an autonomous surgical robot had fallen out after about one month post-surgery. Nolan has said in a recent interview that only 15% of the link electrodes remain in place today, But according to Neuralink, these remaining threads have stabilized, and improvements made to the software algorithms that decode his brain signals have restored Nolan's brain-computer interface capabilities. In light of this, Neuralink has made some changes to their implant procedure that have just been signed off by the FDA and approved for use in patient number two. Neuralink says that one of the unexpected variables they've encountered has been the excessive movement of the human brain. The largest animal brain that Neuralink had previously implanted would have been a sheep, which is pretty big as far as animals go, but comparatively much smaller than a human brain. So what they found was that the human brain actually moves around up to three times more than what Neuralink had expected, and the excessive movement just kind of shook the threads loose. So what's the solution? Pretty simple, really. Just stick the threads in deeper. The FDA has approved Neuralink to reach a depth of 8 millimeters into the brain tissue with their next operation. Nolan's threads were targeted at between 3 and 5 millimeters. With their second operation now happening as soon as next month, Neuralink is clear to implant up to 10 human patients before the end of this year. According to an unnamed Neuralink source reported by the WSJ, there are more than 1,000 quadriplegics who have signed up for Neuralink's patient registry, though fewer than 100 qualify for the study at this time. Neuralink is said to be in search of a diverse set of recipients in order to study a variety of different behaviors. It's unlikely that every Neuralink user will be as free and open about their experience as Noland, who has been making the rounds on national news programs and podcasts recently, telling his story from the bleeding edge of neuroscience and biotechnology. Neuralink sources reported by the WSJ claim that the company's next step will be moving towards regulatory approval in Canada and the United Kingdom in the coming months. Neuralink's patient registry is already open for Canada and will be opening for Britain in a matter of days. Tesla's RoboTaxi reveal on August 8th is the company's most hotly anticipated event in years, particularly by YouTubers who are running out of new things to talk about, but it's also a pretty big deal for the future of Tesla. The company released a very slick new video the other day that featured a flurry of very cool new images, among them being a few shots of what would likely be the company's robo-taxi vehicle prototype and new ride-hailing app. Now, the video itself turned out to be a commercial for Elon Musk's compensation package, which is a bit weird, so weird that Elon felt the need to clarify. The Tesla team put this together of their own volition. I did not ask for it. And while that does somehow make it seem even more like he did ask for it, We'll leave the stock situation to the finance bros and stay in the tech lane. So what's really fascinating is that among footage of Tesla's new autonomous ride-hailing app, we see a very quick pan of a very familiar vehicle concept. It instantly reminded me of this old picture of Tesla's lead designer, Franz von Holzhausen, standing next to a wooden mock-up of a two-seat pod car, but looking at the two side by side, this is definitely an updated take on that same design. The new mock-up is more sleek with more refined curves and body lines. It has a very distinct Tesla look to it. And yes, it is just a bunch of wood tacked together, but this is what we've got to work with here. What I do believe is that Tesla would not show this if it wasn't important. 
They don't seem like the kind of company that is just making concept cars for fun. They've only released six production vehicles in the entire 20-year history of the brand, and it's reinforcing the theory that the Robotaxi will be a very small two-seat, fully autonomous vehicle that's more like a pod than a traditional passenger car, and it's going to be built on a different platform than the Model 3, one with a much shorter wheelbase, smaller cabin, and bigger trunk. There's also a blink and you'll miss it moment in here that would appear to show the new Robotaxi interior. We can see Franz again in the foreground reviewing an interior rendering with no steering wheel and two white seats that look awfully similar to the ones that were inside the wooden mock-up. It looks a bit tight in there, I'm not gonna lie. And one more thing, if you look really closely at Buddy with the glasses right behind his face, what appears to be an exterior rendering of the vehicle with what looks like a scissor action door, like a Lamborghini style door that would probably open and close automatically for ride hailing passengers. So that's a pretty cool Easter egg. We also saw this really weird Tesla vehicle on the road last week that would seem to be up to some Robotaxi related testing. It's definitely just a Model 3, but with some very strange modifications. The side view mirrors are removed, the exterior panel on the B pillar is popped off, and there are a bunch of extra cameras strapped on in weird places. We've got one front side camera that is in the usual position, but sticking out way further from the body panel. Then we've got this weird thing in the rear passenger window that looks like a security camera. It's really big and set inside a black housing. Then there's a rear camera that is kind of taped onto the trunk lid right in the middle of the Tesla logo. If I had to throw a guess out there, it does kind of look like they're testing out some new camera positions for a vehicle that will be similar in shape to a Model 3, but with some slightly different dimensions. What could that be? Remember like a year ago when everyone thought that Tesla was about to build a new Gigafactory in Indonesia, but then nothing happened? Well, we're happy to report that yet again, everyone thinks Tesla is about to build a new Gigafactory in Indonesia. Elon was recently there on a visit to promote his Starlink satellite internet service, but that didn't stop the Indonesian Minister of Investment from claiming that Musk is also considering a potential electric vehicle plant in the country. We know that Elon and Indonesian President Joko Widodo, who is also known as Jokowi, met in Bali after they attended the World Water Forum on Monday. During that meeting, Indonesian officials pitched the idea of a Tesla facility in the country, and Musk seemed to respond to the idea pretty well. The Indonesian Minister of Investment said, quote, We made an offer. Is it possible to build an EV battery plant here? Precursor cathode. And he will consider it. The minister also noted that Jokowi asked Musk if he would consider investing in an AI center in Indonesia. The Indonesian president even pitched the idea of a SpaceX launch pad at Biak Island, which is located in Papua province. Of all the potential Gigafactory locations that are constantly being floated around, India, Malaysia, Canada, Indonesia is a strong contender due to its abundant natural resources, namely a very high concentration of nickel deposits. This would be why the minister specifically referenced battery cathode manufacturing, most of the battery cells that Tesla currently use, including their own 4680 design, have a nickel-based cathode. Nickel has historically been a very difficult and expensive mineral to source and extract from the earth, unless you are in Indonesia. The relatively small island nation represents just less than half of all mine production of nickel in the entire world. So when the Indonesians make an offer to anyone in the business of making and selling batteries, it's likely going to be one that's hard to refuse. 